In this presentation, we will add owner withdrawals from our bank feed into our QuickBooks system using QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. We're going to start off by opening up our reports as has been our custom. We're going to be opening up the balance sheet first. So we're going to go to the reports down on the left hand side. We're going to be opening up the favorite report, that being the balance sheet. We'll scroll back up top and we'll change the dates to the period we're working on, which is 010120 to 12.3120. We're going to go ahead and run that report. Then I'm going to go to the tab up top, right click on that tab up top and duplicate the tab up top. Then we're going to go back to the tab to the left, do the same thing for the P and L, profit and loss income statement. So there it is. There's the P and L. And we're going to go into that and we are going to be opening that or using the same date range up top. So I'm going to go back up top and be 01020 to 12.3120. Let's run that one. And then I'm going to right click on the tab up top again. So we have our financial statements to the right and we can put the data input in the left. Let's now go to our bank feeds on the left and we'll consider our next option here. So we're going to go to the left tab. We're going to go into the banking where we've been working on our bank feeds. And for the first month that we've been doing bank feeds, I'm going to close the hamburger up top so it doesn't get me hungry. And then we're looking down below and we're going to be picking up these uh, bank charges. Now, or actually we're going to be picking up the draws, sorry, the draws. That's the one we want to work with here. Now, it, this might be labeled different types of things depending on the type of institution you have. Uh, so yeah, in other words, the draws might come in. What we're talking about is draws that the owner took out of the um, checking account. Typically, we might think of an ATM type of withdrawal. They just took money out of uh, the account. So if that happens, then of course, it could, they could, your different institutions might name it some, something different in the description column. And you might use the little cog over here to see exactly what their description is to show the, the detail to see what their description is and, and to make sure that uh, QuickBooks Online didn't you know, put something funny here. And then, but the fact is, the problem is that of course, no matter what the description is, it might be called ATM withdrawals or owner withdrawals or cash withdrawal or something like that. If there's no there's no vendor there's nobody that i know we paid so th that means that anytime you deal with cash that's coming out of the bank there's a problem for us if you're a bookkeeper there's a problem or if you're the owner there's a problem because you don't remember what you spent the money on when you took it out of the checking account that's that's the problem there's no audit trail that we can easily see by just simply looking at the bank statement so general rule you don't want to just take money out of the the business account unless it's a draw. So if it's a draw, then that would be our normal assumption. You took money out, you know, the owner took money out for the bookkeeper, the owner took money out for personal use. And therefore we know what account to hit with that, which would be a draws account, an equity account. And I'll show that in a second. But if it's not a draw, if we have a custom of taking money out of the, out of the checking account and spending it on business related things, then we have a problem because we don't know the detail just in terms of our nice easy system of relying on the bank to to know what we spent the money on so cash is a problem for audit trails and so uh for audit trails to make things easy to just make the financial statements and remember with regards to expenses we definitely want any expense on the books because typically we want we want to reflect them for tax purposes and, and for tax purposes expenses make us look worse make net income or taxable income go down and therefore make you know result in less taxes so any expense that's on here you know for small most small companies are going to want clearly to record the expense on a uh, tax basis so that they can record the expense if it's a legitimate business deduction on uh, on their income taxes and if you if you mask it under the draws under cash it's harder to see and it's harder to verify if you did get audited and the IRS audits you and they see that a lot of the outgoing items are simply cash going out. You can have to, that does, that's not an end of the story, but you have to give further verification possibly in the case of an audit, you might have to then go a step further and, and see where you spent the cut, you know, look at receipts and this and that, which, you know, if you, if you had just an audit trail that was electronic and it wasn't a cash draw or checks or something like that, then uh, it'd be easier to see. So note what we can do then if I go over to the balance sheet then and close up the hamburger, what, what would happen is the checking account of course went down because we know it came out of the checking account with the bank draws. 
if we if we we're, if we're imagining we're the bookkeeper and I asked the owner, we asked the owner, you know, what is it? What are you doing with the cash when you take it out? I'm, is it just for your personal use? That would be fine. That would be normal because that would mean that the cash, you know, the company's making money hopefully over time, and then the owner's taking that money out to pay for their personal expenses and possibly invest in their personal, you know, investments. That would be normal. So that's what we're hoping is the answer, right? We're hoping that he says it's a draw or she or he or says it's a draw. We go back down and then where are we going to record the other side? Not to an expense, but to something like uh, a draws account down here, owner pay and personal expenses. So we would put it somewhere down here and we'd put it into this, this account. And that means it's not going to affect the P&L, meaning it's not going to be an expense. If I go to the P&L, it's not going to reflect an expense. It's not going to decrease the net income. It's going to go just on the balance sheet. And that's what we would want if it were a draw. Also, just, just realize that if you were over here and you saw other types of things, let's say you saw an expense going to Disneyland or something like that, or, or a game or like, you know, sporting event or something. And you'd say, well, that doesn't look uh, like a business expense possibly. And if you were to ask, or if you, if you, you know, did that, if you put that on your, on your business, you know, well, what do you do now? I put that on my business records. It shouldn't be in the business records. What do I do? If I had recorded an expense to Disneyland or something like that, or, you know, a baseball game or football game or whatever, then, and it was personal. Well, then you could do the same thing. I mean, it might say here, instead of draws, it's going to say that it went to whatever, you know, expense Disneyland. And we're going to have to say, well, then uh, whenever it goes to Disneyland, whenever we have expenses going to Disneyland, we would want to report them to uh, owner's pay and personal expenses. So in essence, that would be similar. That would be kind of like us taking out uh, the money. And then, so the proper way to do that, if we were going to Disneyland, would to take a draw, take out the money, put it into our personal checking account, then go into Disneyland, at which point it would never uh, re reach the income statement. It would just be a draw. Now, if we didn't do that and we kind of skip that step and we just pay it out of the checking account to Disneyland, then when we put it into the system, we're just simply going to put that vendor rather than to an expense account to draws. It'd be personal expenses. So no one likes to say this because you should always be keeping your your business books separate than the personal. You don't want to, in other words, be paying personal vendors in your business checking account because it, it confuses things. You don't want it in your... If you do that, you'll have in your vendor list, you'll have all these personal vendors in there as well and whatnot. But it is possible kind of to do that, right? I mean, if you were to make, if you were to go through your, your checks over here and, and divvy up the ones that are personal and business, you, you could just simply make the personal checks go to not an expense account, but to, uh, the, the draws account and therefore not affect, uh, the income statement. Now, again, you don't really want to do that. You want to take the draw out in cash and then make any personal expenses on your personal credit cards, personal checking account. But, if, if you happen, if you were to do that, uh, you know, it could be possible to do that. And you might have some expenses that you break out between business and personal. So you might pay like the utility bill and need to break it out between business and personal in some way. And you might have some kind of percentage breakout. We'll talk a little bit more about that uh, after this section, but that could be another area where basically you're kind of forced to enter it possibly into the, the business checking account because part of it is business, but part of it's personal. And therefore, the part that's business would be going to an expense account for utilities in that case. The part that's personal, then we can then assign to to the uh, owner's pay pay account over here and have it split up uh, in some fashion when we make when we make those type of expenses. So just be aware of the personal, you know, when you pay the personal expenses or when you take money out that you need to be putting it to equity here. And again, best practice is not to be paying the personal out of the business account, have a separate account. But again, if you do have a personal account, if you do pay personal expenses, then you can, you know, go through them. It just takes more work. You got to go through them. And if you have a bookkeeper doing it, it's going to confuse them because they're not going to know which vendors are personal, which are business. But uh, if you go through here and you go through and, and you could find this and you could find those personal expenses and pull them out and put them to an equity account. So, or we can, we can ask the, the owner and they could say, well, you pulled out 80, you know, you pulled out this amount. Is it, is it uh, personal? And they might say, no, I pulled it out of the business account and then I spent it on business related stuff. And if that's the case, then we would have to ask, okay, well, what is the related expense account related to it? And if that's a, if that's a normal practice, if the owner takes money out of the checking account and possibly spends it 
on on something that they need to spend a cash transaction on maybe they have a set type of process for that that we can see and recognize from month to month uh and so if that were the case maybe i'm just going to put it into miscellaneous at this point in time so we'll, we would say okay then that's going to be a miscellaneous expense unless you can give me kind of the expense categorization remember that if you put something in a miscellaneous expense for like taxes that's not the irs if you have a whole lot of miscellaneous expense as your category or office expense uh that are you know just a general expense the irs might question that they might say hey i'd like to see you know that might ha you know pique someone's interest over there to see what is all this stuff in miscellaneous expense if it was a high dollar amount so you want to you'd like to characterize it if possible and support that information uh with you know receipts if you're doing the cash items and of course if you're expensing it you'd rather not use cash if, if at all possible because you would like the audit trail to be there within the bank statement okay so i'm going to go back to the first tab and we're, that's what we're going to do here we're going to assume that this draw was business i'm going to put it into miscellaneous the next time we'll assume the draw is personal and we'll put it into the equity section so we could see that difference so i'm going to go to the draws it's uncategorized i'm going to put it into miscellaneous expense miscellaneous expense and i'm just going to call it other miscellaneous expense here uh, i think quickbooks when you use their gl has a miscellaneous expense it may not be going to expenses by default it might be going to other expenses but it'll still show up on the income statement so you'll have that and then down here it's trying to make a rule on it and again i'm going to say no i don't i don't want a rule with that one because you know i i'm not sure exactly what the what if they took out a whole lot next time you know maybe it maybe i mean what happens when they do take money out and it's going to be a draw then i'm, I'm going to need to recategorize it so these are ones i'm going to have to question about whenever the money comes out if they're telling me that that they spend some of that cash on on the business then i don't want to set the rule if on the other hand they they do have a rule saying every time i take money out it's not business related any expense that i have and this would be would be what i recommend any expense that i have i write a check i do an electronic transfer i do a credit card which is business related and therefore they're all they'll all be recorded for you anything that comes out of the of the account that is a draw that doesn't have one of those types of functions affecting it all you see is cash coming out that's a draw that's what i would recommend being the system but if it's not if you know cash is coming out and it's being spent on the business then you're gonna have to you know then you then you can't save the save the rule you're gonna have to ask you know from time to time and say you know is this a draw or is this business related do we have an expense account uh related to it so i'm going to go ahead and add that and take a look at what happens if we add that i'm going to go back up to the balance sheet if we go of course into the checking account see what happens in the checking account first and scroll on down we see that uh we have the cash going out and there it is the 80 dollars. and if i check click on the 80 dollars, then we'll get to that uh expense form that's familiar expense form notice i didn't put a vendor in here i probably should i should put the owner or something like that i gave you a general rule that we should basically have uh the vendors in here so you may put the vendor name i'm not going to add the vendor here however you may want to put like the vendor name or owner or something like that i'm going to uh, close this back out I'm going to scroll back up top and go back to our report. Now, the other side here isn't going to the equity section as it would if it were a draw. Instead, going to P&L because we're saying that that amount was spent on uh, the, the uh, expense accounts. So we didn't know the category, category of the expense account. Therefore, we just put it into miscellaneous expense. And there's the $80 in the miscellaneous expense so again we did this in january as well and in february and in april in our practice problem we will then record it to a draw rather than the expense if i go back to our p and l and scroll back up top and we take a look at the dates just for the third month the one we're working on 030120 to 033120 we run that report we can see the detail that we currently have and there's the 80 dollars that's going to the miscellaneous expense we have negative amount in net income we have not recorded any deposits and therefore on a cash basis don't have anything for this month with income as of yet until we get those deposits in place